Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. So, um, CARMAT, I think it's really the next revolution in cardiology, and it's what I call the fifth revolution. After defibrillators, uh, TAVR, uh, MitraClip, I had the chance to be responsible for the development, and uh, as well, drug editing stand uh, I worked actively on. So, um, CARMAT, well, our mission is pretty simple, so we want to become the primary alternative to our transplant. Uh, very quickly, I think we, we all know that MCS, mechanical security support, is a very difficult space. In 40 years, only one technology made it, for a tech acquired uh, by Abbott uh, with the LVADs. So it's a very difficult field, but there is a real need. And uh, as you can see, the company uh, has been uh, created in 2008, and we've been pretty fast at developing um, the company in terms of manufacturing, uh, uh, studies. We got the C mark in 2020, uh, and uh, we got commercial launch 2021. Uh, we had to suspend uh, because we had some quality issues, as it uh, very often happens. And we are restarting as we speak, and we are in discussion right now with the FDA uh, to restart core B of the early feasibility study. What is striking is that we've been outperforming all competitive projects. Indeed, we are the only company starting 2008, commercial and in US studies. Our ultimate goal, obviously, is to be destination therapy. Today, we are approved for bridge transplant. So I think uh, you don't need to be good at math. Uh, the equation is very easy. You have a need uh, around 250,000 transplants uh, between Europe and the US only a year, and you have only 5,500 donors. So only or less than 3% of people will be treated, or all the rest will die within a year. And uh, this number, unfortunately, is growing uh, exponentially, as you know. Uh, uh, in the last 10 years, heart failure became the first cause of death in front of cancer, as you all know. And there is a very interesting publication uh, that has been published uh, a few months ago showing that dying from heart failure is much worse than dying from cancer. Well, so as of today, doctors, what do they do? They play with drugs, uh, CRT technologies and LVATs, but there is a real need for uh, a total actual art, such as our product uh, called EASON. The device um, uh, EASON is probably, and, and for sure, uh, the most sophisticated medical device developed so far. So we are using electronic boards from missiles, we are using pumps from helicopters, much smaller, obviously, and uh, we are using sensors. And this to make sure that we can mimic the work of a human art. So our, uh, our founder was uh, Anna Carpentier. Uh, that's why we are called CarMet, Car from Carpentier, and Met from Metra Defense, Airbus Group. And uh, Anna Carpentier wanted to have an art which works like a human art. And it worked pretty well, as you will see. So the way it works, and that's a unique uh, approach, everybody is using pumps because we all know how to build a pump based on the elevator work. The issue of pumps, you have a lot of clinical complications because you have metal or plastic in contact with blood. So what Carpentier wanted is to avoid the blood to be in contact with metal or plastic. So that's why we used hydraulic system. As well, we are the only company to have a, a circadian rhythm, so we adapt the blood flow real time, so we change the flow uh, every two milliseconds. So basically what we do is that we measure the need, so if I work quicker, every millisecond I know how much blood I need, and every two milliseconds we adapt the blood flow. Obviously, the caveat today for all these technologies is all the, the, the batteries are outside. Uh, it will change. I mean, you, you saw other technologies, so everybody will work on induction, but nowadays we have external uh, uh, batteries. Um, our product is very different from all the others, and it's really a game changer. So we are highly immocompatible. We have no uh, hemolysis, so we are the, the only device. We believe we won't need any antiplatelet therapy. We'll publish it very soon. It's baby aspirin, but we, we think we don't need that. And on top of this, we think we don't need anticoagulation either. Uh, unlike the others, we have no coumadin but low molecular heparin, and uh, we know we can uh, make without it. Um, it's silent, it's physiological flow, it's pulsatile, and it varies all the time, real time. What is striking if you read the literature, I won't ask you to read the literature, I didn't read myself the literature, but my team told me that you need four requ uh, requirements to avoid complications. You need to have bioventricular support, pulsatility, immocompatibility, autoregulation, and we are the only device uh, today to be able to gather this, and it translates directly into clinic. Uh, 
out of 16 years of cumulative support, 34 patients, we never experienced stroke, never experienced bleeding, never experienced infection. So it's by design and it's been proven to, to work uh, as we wanted. So as of now, and uh, we are commercial, we are back, and we expect this year to be the full first commercial year. So we treated so far 34 patients. Even patients have been transplanted. The longest support in the study, it was both bridge to transplant and destination, was 25 months. Uh, the patient uh, died from cancer. We extracted the, 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 the product, and it was working still very well. Uh, in terms of short-term uh, goals, so uh, we will concentrate to uh, the German region, which is the larger region in medtech in Europe, so we won't spread thin. Our goal is to be in 30 hospitals by the end of the year, secure reimbursement in key geographies, which worked already pretty well in Germany with many regions reimbursing the device 240K um, um, per device and scaling up the organization for market expansion. In parallel, we are working on, on a study to uh, really uh, support the value proposition as we grow. Uh, that's a 52 uh, study uh, in health economics, which started uh, last quarter in France. And uh, the goal is to be uh, finished with the study in 2025. Obviously, we started as well our efforts in the US. Probably some of you uh, read the case report on the first patient treated two years ago in Duke. It's pretty impressive what we managed to do. That was a rescue case, cardiac arrest. And uh, so we had court one of three patients, and now we need to go to court uh, two of seven patients. We are still in discussion with the FDA to, uh, to work on the restart. So it's a huge business. The time is uh, more than uh, 10 billions. Uh, we have a unique technology. We have no constraints, unlike uh, uh, structural art businesses where you have a limited number of doctors of labs. I mean, you have capacity for surgery, and we will uh, invest especially in manufacturing. We are burning roughly 5 million euros a month, and we have runway until July of this year. Um, our shareholders, our lead investor is the co-leader, is the co-founder, uh, is Airbus with 12%. We have uh, deep pockets, family offices, and we are working to attract now uh, institutions as we are getting commercial. So very quickly, the goals for this year, it's a full commercial year uh, to enroll in the French study, complete the early feasibility study, double the manufacturing capacity from 250 to 500 per annum, uh, have 30 centers active. Um, and the outlook for the year is at least 10 million euros for the first year. And midterm objectives, 1,000 devices by 2027, uh, get reimbursement, reduce cost of goods, and get break even by 2027. So uh, in a few words, uh, a big time, significant unmet need, is the only device with high potential to replace our transplant, no competition, unproven leadership. So thank you very much for your time.